product pricing. You got questions, I got answers. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Zach, and if you're new to the channel, learn all the secrets of the e-commerce world simply by subscribing to my channel and hitting that little bell icon so you don't miss anything. And in this video, I'm going over a topic that I actually get asked about a lot, and I realize that it's not really something that you can just jump into and know. And what I'm talking about here is product pricing. And a lot of weight seems to be put on product pricing from the start, and from a lot of people that are just getting into e-commerce, dropship, really any aspect of e-commerce, not just drop shipping, um, and it's seen as very important. And while it is definitely important, and while there are some things you have to take into account, it's really not as important or as hard to nail product pricing as you may think it is. Um, I originally thought so. I thought you had to like keep prices way lower, or else nobody was going to buy it. But through some experimentation and through a bunch of different products that I was selling in a bunch of different niches, um, I've actually come to the conclusion that it's really not that big of a deal. I'm going to tell you why. So first of all, I'm going to give a little bit of a personal example. So I started one of my stores. Um, this was the first store that I started way back when. I was launching a bunch of products, nothing was selling. And then boom, I started selling a product. I found a winner. And um, it's this winner that actually went on to scale my store for however long I've been running it now. Um, that's the side of the point. So I found this winner product and I was like, okay, awesome. Um, let's go ahead and put it up. Um, the product cost me, I think it was $3 shipped to order from AliExpress. Um, and I put it on my website for $10, okay? And I was selling a good amount of them. Um, it was going pretty well. And I was like, okay, if I'm selling it at $10, let me see if I can bump it up to $13. So I did like $12.95. Still sold the same amount. And I was like, okay, um, what if I bump it up to $15? Same amount. I bumped it up to $20. And not only did my sales stay the same, I believe that they actually rose. Now, I haven't actually gone back into um, the statistics and actually saw if they rose or not. But I, when I set it to $20 um, and I scaled my ads up, I, it just had better results and it was either the same uh, success or better than when I was charging half the price. And really it all comes down to perceived value because uh, one of the, the niche that I'm in is jewelry. Now there's a, su a sub niche that I sell um, within that, but like jewelry, right? So a lot of this actually does with perceived value and a lot of products that you're going to be selling really, really deal with perceived value too because a lot of the time you're not gonna be able to find the exact item that you're dropping shipping anywhere else, right? Like it's a China only thing. So there's not a lot of comparison prices to base off of, base off of excuse me. Um, so like if this was a necklace, let's just say, of course, for a kind of crap neck, like it's not crap, but it's not like, oh, sterling silver with diamonds on it, right? You have a benchmark for really what you want to price it around. Like $20, I probably wouldn't go more than that, maybe 25 bucks. That's generally what you see a bunch of other necklaces selling for that are around this quality. And that's what people are going to have in their heads. They're going to be like, okay, um, I see this necklace, they're charging $20. I've seen other necklaces kind of like this that sell around that price. That's a good price, I'm gonna buy it. Now, the thing with this is that if you sell it for too cheap, people can see it as, you know, too cheap. It can be crap. And this is definitely a detriment. So you want a very, very good middle ground between um, this is too cheap, it's either a scam or the product is crap, or um, this is too expensive, I'm not gonna spend the money on that. But there's actually a very, very large middle ground that you're really going to find out by just testing. So I can't really say, hey, if you're selling shirts, price them at $25, right? I can't say that because it really, really depends on how much people are willing to spend on your product. And what I would recommend doing is definitely pricing it lower and then slowly incrementing up like I did because that really worked well for me. And it's definitely, um, it allows you to really see, and, and you don't want to start too low, right? Because then you get like the crap quality, but it allows you to make sure that it's not your price that's turning people away. Way, um, it's the actual product, right? So if you start at a decent price and you're making sales, then you just slowly bump it up from there. So I've just gone ahead and gone on to AliExpress and I found just a general uh, ring just for like general jewelry. Um, I probably wouldn't sell a ring like this just because it doesn't really cater to a niche. It's kind of generic looking, um, but that's beside the point. Anyway, I found this ring. It looks pretty nice in itself um, and it costs about $4. The product price is about $4. Okay, let's base a little bit of a hypothetical around on this product. Let's go over here to this little whiteboard thing. Okay, great. So we have um, a ring and it costs us $4 to buy, okay? So $4 
is what we're spending on the ring. And let's say we're running an advertisement, and this is where it really gets like non-specific because there's so many different ways that you can advertise, so I can't really give much of a blanket statement. But let's just say we're running a $10 advertisement off for it, right? Okay, so $10. And let's just assume that that, I forgot the one, let's just assume that that is um, spending all of its budget every day and that's going that. So, right, so we have a $4 uh, spend for the ring and we're spending $10 um, per day, right? So let's say we are spending $10 a day on the ad, okay? Now, let's give a little bit of a hypothetical. Let's think about if we sell one ring, okay? So we sell one and it costs us $4 um, to make. Well, that is going to bump our cost up for the day um, to $14. Okay. Now that means that this ring better be worth about this or more than this if we want to see a profit. Now it's going to be different, especially if you have a much higher budget, because really the amount of purchases that you're going to be getting per day um, are going to vary greatly. So that really depends. This is definitely a smaller side of the budget. So when you're running a budget this small, I probably wouldn't worry about, that, about it that much, but it's just, like I said, it's just using it as a hypothetical. So it costs us $14 in uh, costs, right? So what should we actually charge if we want to make good money? Well, let's just say $20, okay? So we charge $20 and we make $20 off of this ring. Let's like not include um, Shopify fees or anything like that, right? So $20. That means that we are making $6. Oops, not 60. Good Lord. We're making $6 off of a single sale on this ad set. Now this is assuming that you make about one sale per day off of this $10 ad. And generally, that's pretty conservative. Generally off of $10 ads, I, I'd like to see about two or three sales, um, but let's just say one sale. Okay, you're making $6, that's fantastic. Now let's say we bump that up and we are doing um, two, right? We have two sales, that means uh, it's the $20 minus the $4 product cost, which is um, 14 or sorry, $16, which means that we're going to bump this up to $22 in profit, which is absolutely fantastic off of that $10 ad. So $22 off of a $10 ad is actually a very, very good return. I mean, that's over a, uh, that's over double what you're spending getting returned to you, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, if we were to be uh, actually charging less for the ring, right? Let's say we're charging $15. Well, for the first one, we're making uh, $1 if we get one sale per day. And then if we get two dollar or two sales per day, then that's 15 minus four is 11, so that's 12 dollars per day, which is substantially um, smaller. You're making five dollars less per sale, so obviously it's you know going down like that. But um, really, that's just a way to look at it. So even if I were to be making though, if I'm making a good amount of sales off of this ad, um, to like two sales per day. $12 in profit per day really isn't that bad at all. And obviously, like I said, you're generally not gonna be running ads for $10. You're pretty much, when you find a winner, you're gonna be scaling that bad boy up to a much higher budget. Um, but even at this low budget with some low returns, boom, you're at $12. And this is just kind of a way to look at it. You can plug in different numbers, different ad spends, um, see how many sales you'd need per day to turn a profit. Um, generally, I'm pretty confident with the ads that I run. So I can say, hey, I can lose money on uh, not selling one or two items. But once I hit that third item, it's really gonna start going up. And that generally gets enough reach for me to reach a lot of people to where I'm always pretty consistently getting sales. And that's what really works for me. Um, now, this is, a, like I said, a very difficult video to make just because of the fact that it varies greatly but really here's the thing you need to think about what people are going to be willing to pay for your product right if it's a very hot product and they haven't really seen it before and it's like eye-catching and wow this is awesome you can generally get away with charging a little bit more and then of course you can charge more if your branding is great if your actual uh, sales and your descriptions are better um, just because you're talking up the item and making people believe that it's more valuable than it actually is there's just a bunch of different things that come into play here and that's what I've really done I've made sure the branding on my store is absolutely fantastic so I can actually charge a little bit more of a premium on the products and it doesn't take away from my sales at all so you want to see what similar items are selling for that's a 
a very good baseline. Don't go by that entirely, but like I said, it's a good thing to start basing your price off of and potentially get like the upper and uh, lower ranges of what you should be pricing it for. Um, I mean, you can look at other drop shipping stores and what they have, and if there's a successful store, then you know their prices work and they prove that they convert. So go ahead and use them as a reference. Um, but additionally, you just want to test yourself. You may be missing out on a lot of money. Had I stuck with ten dollars because it was making me sales, I would have been making half of what I am making now, um, just because of the fact that hey you know, I doubled my prices and it didn't affect sales at all. So, and I wouldn't have found that out if I didn't test. So definitely make sure you're just testing product prices, but don't worry too much. It's not going to turn away that many people. You would actually be very, very surprised. If someone's willing to buy your item, five, like a $5 difference in price isn't going to mean a lot. Now, of course, always charge free shipping because you don't want to like surprise them with those $5. Otherwise they may be like, ooh, but if you just present it straight up like that, there's a very, very good chance that they will convert off of it. So if you want to get in on a store review or anything else that I offer, there's a link down in the description for that. However, if you just like my videos, hit that subscribe button down below if you enjoyed what I said and how I said it. Check out those videos over there if you want any more ideas for what to watch, and I'm going to see you guys in my next video. Peace out.